In this video, we are going to continue our Git tutorial for beginners. So far, we did, we did a lot. We created a new repository. We cloned the repository. We made changes. We committed the changes. And now we're actually going to push it. Every time, every time you make a commit locally, whatever changes you made, the goal is eventually to save it on the remote, right? So we made the changes and we saved it, committed it. That's the right word. And now we're going to push it to the remote. And we're going to create a pull request and merge the pull request. So our code, the code on our branch, will get merged into main. That is the goal. So we're going to get to that. If you are following this and if you're learning, you should take it as a course. I have a free course that includes this Git tutorial as well as a bunch of other engineering essentials. I put the, I put the link in the description. You can also go to supersqa.com slash engineering toolbox. It is, it's an awesome course. It's a course of, it's a collection of courses that I think beginners need to know. Instead of going all over the place, you have one place that you get a lot of the important things you have to know as a beginner and Git being part of it. Git is really important for anybody trying to learn to code. Uh, and I included Git in there and a bunch of other things as well. Definitely check it out. It's a free course. That's, it's, it's quite an amazing course for free. All right, so let's get to it and let's talk about pushing our code. All right, so, so far we made a commit. In fact, we made a few commits and now it's time to actually push it. So we finished making changes on our local machine. We committed our code. Basically, we saved our code, right? That's not the right word, but it's just to make you visualize things. We saved it. Now that all of that is local and our code lives on the remote. So we're going to push it to the remote. So if we look at, let's just look at the information for the remote. So if I clear this and if I do git, remote dash v just get used to checking that time to time because a lot of times this is advanced but for the same folder you might be able to you you will be able to uh, track it into different remotes but that's advanced we'll talk about it maybe i don't think that's important but i might add things a video about that later on but in this case this remote there is a name origin that's very common by default the credit as origin but that's just a name for this so if you have multiple remotes each one would have different origin for example i have projects where i have some i have my code in gitlab as well as in github those are two different companies right and i have reasons for that so i'll call one of them origin and that the other one i call it origin 2 or origin gh versus origin gl okay so in this case our our ours is origin so we're going to push it to origin Okay, so we made a code commit. Now we want to push it. So what's the next command? Git push. Git push. If we just do git push and enter, it knows we just want to push, okay, to, to origin. Or we can say git push origin. Be very specific. Hit enter. And it's going to push to that branch. We own a specific branch, right? Remember that command? What was the command to see a branch? Git branch. Just to see git branch. It shows you what branch we're on and we just pushed it and in, in our push command it actually shows you a, a bunch of things here the only thing is it would ask you for a password when you do a git push it will ask you for a password and that's when you're going to put that token the token we got i can quickly uh, show you if you have if you didn't do it so you come to here you go to your account under your account you go to uh let's see I got to do it quick, 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 because I wasn't even planning on showing that. Go to settings. And also at the bottom, there should be a developer setting. And at that, at the time you watch this, I, this might change, but just use common sense. I'm going to use personal access token. I'm going to go to classic and then uh, basically generate a new token, generate a new token, generate a new token, I classic, give it a name, give it a repo access and basically create it. And that will give you some, some weird, uh, string a long string and that would be a password so as soon as you do git push in fact I'm on the next video i probably should do it for um i'm already logged in so i don't know how i'm able to actually it knows who i am because of my ssh uh, it just knows who i am that's why it didn't ask for my password but it will ask for your password and all you got to do is just type it and one thing you have to remember it, it, it gets everybody is it won't show you since it's a terminal when you put in your password it's not going to show you the password but just trust it just paste it copy paste and hit enter it's not it's, it's going to look like you're, you're, you're not typing anything but you are typing it just doesn't show you because the password just hit enter and it should work i'll find a way to show that i don't know if i how i can show it but i'll probably uh, create a new video for that okay 
So you do a git push, it will ask for your password because we're using HTTPS, put in the token that we just created. Type, put it in there and you should have exactly this message, okay? Now, once you push, we just pushed it to the remote. We come to the remote repository. I'm gonna just hit that back button to get back to my repository or right here. This is the repository, right? Usually you will get this yellow notif notice saying, hey, you have a new change because you have a recent push, you pushed it to the remote. Do you wanna compare and create a request, create a pull request, okay? You can click that, but I'm just gonna show you in case you don't get this message, how you would create. So now you made a change on your branch, you pushed it, right? And now you wanna put it into the main, right? Because main is where it's gonna live forever. Your branch is gonna delete it, that's temporary. So you're gonna go to pull request. A pull request is basically a request for you to merge it, right? And other services like in GitLab, GitLab is another one of, GitHub is a brand, GitLab is another brand. In GitLab, in fact, they call it merge request, which makes a lot more sense because you, you're requesting to merge it. You wanna take one branch, you wanna take another branch and you wanna merge them. So it's called a merge request. But in GitHub, which is like one of the oldest ones, they call it a pull request, but it means the same exact thing, okay? So you go to a pull request and you're gonna say new pull request, okay? That that yellow notice is here just to make it easy for you because you, you, you just made a push. They know after you made a push, the next thing is creating a pull request. So that's why they give you uh, like a shortcut right here. So I'm gonna click on new pull request. And then I'm going, it's gonna ask me from what branch to what branch are you, are you trying to merge? Uh, usually I'm used to it going from right to le from left to right, but this one is from right to left. Look at this arrow. You're saying take this branch and merge it into this guy, right? So I wanna take my branch, my first branch, I only have one branch, and then merge it to main. That's what I want. And at the bottom here, it shows me what the changes are. Remember we added only one file, it shows me that. Before I even created, I didn't even create the pull request yet. So I'm gonna say create pull request. Now the pull request is almost created. There's a couple of clicks. You can add comments here. Cause what happens is when you create a pull request, somebody else got to review it and approve it for you, right? You, you're the one who wrote the code and you want to put it into main. You want to put it into the where it's going to live forever. So somebody, some other engineer in your team would need to look at it and make sure everything is good. You, did a, you didn't introduce a new bug or anything. It's called a code review, right? That person would review it, would approve it. Then it depends on how it's set up. As soon as he approves it, it might automatically merge. The person who are approving it might merge it or it might be somebody else that has uh, ability to merge, or it might be you that have to merge it, right? It's all set up. Um, a lot of times, QAs, QAs are aware of everything that's going on, so the, the developers would approve it, then QAs, QEs, they merge it, a lot of times. It all depends on the company, how it's all set up. But the idea is it's gonna be reviewed, so you can put a description here, you can put comments. For somebody that's reviewing it, you can tell them, if, usually I don't even do that, but if there's anything special you want them to know, you can put a comment here, then you're gonna click on create pull request. That is gonna create a pull request. When you create a pull request, a lot of things can happen. We're just gonna focus on the pull request part. A lot of jobs that can run, like, like do a sanity check, make sure you didn't do it, you didn't introduce any security issues. There are stuff that would actually scan your code and automatically reject, before a human even reviews it, automatically rejects the pull request. There's a lot that can go on, but we're gonna keep it basic here. So the pull request is created, and there's a button to merge it, because this is my own repository, I can I have the access to merge it without actually getting reviewed and approved, just because it's my own repo, right? At work, you can't do that. So let's assume you, li you leave this, we're gonna go to the code. If you go to code, you, go to, you look at the main branch, uh, you're still looking at the old stuff. Now in the pull request, you see one right there. That means there is one open pull request. So you can click on that and you can see, you will have a bunch of pull requests, right? I might have a pull request, Bob might have it, Mary might have it. A lot of other engineers might have created a pull request. So you'll, you'll see all the requests listed here, but this is the one we just created. And I click on it, we get back to the same page. If you wanna look at the differences right here, it says files changed. That will show you the differences. If I have multiple files changed, it will list them out. In this case, it's a brand new file. Every single line here is new, so everything is green, and it's that file. So um, the commits, if you wanna look at the commits, it will list, remember every time we made a commit, and we make a commit, and we, we give it a message, all of those are tracked. They're there forever. That's how 
that's how if you want to revert things let's say you don't want to make this two you don't want to keep this two commits you want to go back to the old commit and th you will use this commit id every I, every commit have a hash it has a lot of use for it it's, i would think it's not very beginner friendly so i'll skip it but there is a way to revert your code to a specific commit i made three commits if i want if i want to get rid of this first this last two and go to this one there is a way i just want you to know that so now you go back to this conversation tab and you basically click on this to merge it there might be a few other options i'm just going to click on merge whatever the default is and confirm merge now your code is merged if you go to code tab here now your code is on main right so earlier the index.html was not here not at all right so now the main branch has it if you want to change branch also if you want to view a different branch you can change it here but right now main and my branch are the same i just changed the branch they're both the same so we're going to see exact same thing because we just merged my my uh my custom branch into main we just merged it so that's pretty much it right now right that's all we we have to do so in the next video i'm going to show i'm going to do this again just to commit and push and create an MR file because right now I'm so explaining such a detail everything is slow but things happen really fast so in the next video before we finish this project I'm going to I'm going to do a few more projects just like this end to end check out code make changes push it but in the middle there will be new things I will introduce but you have to practice that but this one before I before I finalize this project let's do one more change okay so um let's do that in a, in, in, a, in a different video let's just go to the next one and we'll do it on the next one but in this one i just want to show you what we did is we already had a commit so we basically pushed it and after we push it we created a pull request and after the pull request we merged the pull request so we did three different things that's what we did so let's go to the next one all right that was another part in our git tutorial uh, if you run into any issues as usual put the errors you get in the comment and i'll really do my best to help out um, and try to offer a solution and also really consider taking the free course i have a free course that includes git and a bunch of other things and the, the url is in the description it is basically supersqa.com slash engineering toolbox check it out and let's go to the next one and let's uh, finalize this project and we're going to keep working on a few other projects